The Vendée Globe is uh, not only a, a physical challenge of man and machine, uh, but it's also a huge mental challenge and it takes a particular breed of sailors to, to partake in this event and it's pretty special. The constant decisions that are all important to what, um, what's going on and you can't share that with anybody. That's, that's your, you're in charge of that. You have to take those decisions. The pressure on the equipment, but also the sailor, is, is beyond what most people and most things can, can deal with. That every time you nod off or slacken your attitude or just take a break, even having a bit of food, you're potentially losing the opportunity to gain a few inches on your competitors. He has to do everything. And that's, I think that's one of the things that's particular to single-handed offshore racing. Is um, So if you're racing with eight guys on the boat, normally you'd have somebody in the crew would be, would be, you know, a background in rigging, somebody would be a background in electronics. Uh, whereas Alex needs to be capable of doing everything. So he has to have enough knowledge in all areas to be able to keep the boat going. All those things that look quite easy to deal with, making power, making water. You know, for, for a lot of people, it seems strange that you leave on a long distance race with no water, but it's too heavy, so we have to make that. So you have to plan when you make it. The battery charging, the batteries don't last forever. When you put the, the radar on, there's decisions you're making all the time. Every minute of the day you're awake, you're making some, some decision. And some of those are unimportant. Some will have a huge bearing on what your position will be at the end of the race but all of them have to be made. It's continuous and that's why you can't just say, oh, I'll take a three hour race, just have to sleep for three hours because you'll miss one of those little decisions that might be very important in a day's time, a week's time. Everything he does on that race course is about making decisions. You're within one bad decision, you can lose hundreds of miles. So you know, for him, it's critical that he can assess himself, look at himself, gauge that, am I in the right mindset to make that decision? What are the risks if I make that decision? How much do I gain? How much do I lose? It's, it's an ongoing battle that he has to play for 70 days in the Vendee Globe. From the day you cross the start line to the finish, you're constantly making tactical decisions. So you know, it's tough, it's tough for him, and he has to assess it. And when it's bad, it's very public, everyone can see it, and you have to live with it and then you have to fight it back. So, you know, it's an ongoing battle for the, all the skippers that are in this race. When you're out there by yourself, you know, there's, there's no one to blame. Everything is, is down to you. You've got to cook, you've got to sleep, you've got to trim the sails, you've got to drive the boat. You know, everything comes down to you as, a, as an individual. Even doing a sail change, which for 10 people on a same size boat might take 20 minutes and is a full on aerobic effort for, t for 10 minutes, half an hour, for him it's three hours. You know, he's got to, it takes forever to drag the sail up there, tidy up afterwards, it goes on and on and on. And just to wind the sail up might take half an hour. He might be winding constantly to pull the sail up. So every sail change is a physical activity, but then probably more energy is spent about making the decision to make that sail change. Because you might say, well, I'm only gonna change it for an hour, because I think the weather's gonna go back to what it is. So you, we won't change, or you do. Either way, you, he's gonna make that call. And all those little decisions are things that are very important to where he ends up in the race. The greatest challenge for him is to do the trade-off between looking after himself in the boat and going very fast. Um, the races he competes in are, are very long. It's a real skill to know when to go for it and when to push really hard and then to say, okay, now I need to just slow down a tad to look after myself and look after the boat. And to be able to make those the right decisions over and over again, over two months, maybe even three months is, is a real challenge. You imagine it'd be like the equivalent of somebody sat in a rally car, you know, doing something like Paris Dakar, but it goes on for two and a half months. 
just the, the difficulty of that, of managing everything um, all together by yourself for so long. I just, I just find it such an incredible human challenge and it's a human challenge, but also a technical challenge. So it's a little bit like Formula One, but if you turned it into one of the longest endurance events in the world. The boats are, are, are very relentless, but the, the big aspect of the whole thing in solo sailing is your mentality and just being able to, to deal with everything that's thrown at you. And at the same time, you're, you're racing, you're an athlete and you're constantly thinking of the best way to take the boat forward and, and beat your competitors. It's a complete mental game.